Strange Real History, helping fans old and new understand the in-game lore from the Ace Combat series. If you're new here, consider subscribing. Enjoy! Do you guys remember when Brett Thompson, the narrator of the documentary Warriors and the Belkin War, said this? Politicians from all countries squabbled with each other over the rights to the underground natural resources, the initial cause of this war. What if I told you that there were other factors besides obtaining the rights to valuable natural resources that caused the war, and that increased military spending and a partnership gone horribly wrong that eventually led to thousands of people losing their lives? This is the Belkin Economic Crisis. I think this calls for a little history lesson. By the onset of the 1980s, the Belkin Federation made a lot of progress. They gained control of Rectus territory in the last war and had the best air force. Life looked pretty good at the time for the Belkin Federation, but Belka wasn't the only one prospering. Osea and Yuktobania were experiencing large economic and military growth. This growth in wealth and power inevitably caused both nations to compete against each other in a game of who had the best military weapons. They continued to expand their nuclear arsenals and develop new weaponry to counter each other. Osea and Yuktobania were in the midst of a Cold War. While observing the ongoing Cold War, Belka's leaders decided that they needed to expand and advance their weapons in order to defend their homeland from foreign invasions. With a decision made, Belka began to develop multiple experimental weapons. Now, we can probably assume that there have been multiple projects that Belka spent its hard-earned money on throughout the 1980s, but I'm just going to talk about four projects that we know were made. Also, I'm just going to briefly summarize each of the four projects. I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail about the science and how each weapon operated. That will be in its own separate video, okay? Let's start off with the first project on the list. In 1981, Belka started its own Ballistic Missile Defense Program. Belkin engineers and scientists were coming up with ways on how to protect the nation against any ICBM attacks. I cannot blame them for thinking that way, because what would happen if Osea or Yuktobania just decided to point those missiles towards Belka? That wouldn't be good for Belka. Once all of the concepts were reviewed, Belka approved the idea of creating Excalibur a long-range anti-ICBM laser interception system. This weapon is given the name Excalibur because the main tower looks similar to a sword stuck in stone. Excalibur would be built in the central region of Tauberg, where the laser's maximum firing range would encompass and protect the major Belkin cities from any ICBM attacks. Construction of the weapon would be undertaken by the South Belka Munitions Factory. We know them today as Grunder Industry. But before construction would begin, the South Belka Munitions Factory was already working on its other project, the Advanced Dominance Fighter, or ADF for short. Developed in the early 1980s, the ADFX-01 Morgan was an all-weather, multi-purpose aircraft with attack and defensive capabilities that far exceed any other fighter at the time. The ADFX-01 was built to be a platform for the South Belka Munitions Factory's three next-generation weapon systems. And I apologize if I butcher their names. But these are the three special weapons. They were the Zoysite TLS, a large pod attached to the rear of the ADFX that shot a high-energy laser beam. The Hyperthene MPBM, a burst missile that explodes and inflicts damage over a wide area when in close proximity to the target, and the Morganite ECMP, a radar jamming pod designed specifically for the ADFX. Although the ADFX-01 was an excellent plane, it could only carry one of the three special weapons during flight. To counter this problem, the South Belka Munitions Factory decided to create a more advanced variant of the ADFX-01. On January 4, 1985, the ADFX-02 Morgan was born. While sharing the same body design and performance upgrades, the ADFX-02 featured a reinforced airframe and the ability to carry all of its special weapons simultaneously. Not only did the aircraft receive upgrades, 
its three special weapons received upgrades as well. The TLS can now redirect its laser at different angles, the MPBM can now be dropped behind the plane and be remotely detonated, and the ECMP can now deflect incoming missiles and bullets at any angle except for the front. Gotta watch out for incoming missiles at your 12 o'clock. While the ADF-X02 was being tested, Project Pendragon, a military program that developed retaliation weapons, conceived the next experimental weapon on the list, the MIRV Missile V2. V2 was a delivery vehicle capable of housing multiple warheads inside its compartment. The V2 missile would launch and travel to a predetermined location. Once V2 was close enough, it would release its payload and each warhead would travel towards their designated targets and detonate. With the Project Greenlit, Project Pendragon was able to get a fully functioning V2 unit developed and stationed in silos within the Avalon Dam reservoirs. Sadly, this would be the program's final weapon that they created. In the year 1987, Belka was suffering from a severe economic recession due to their increased military spending. In an effort to stabilize the nation's economy, the government underwent an internal federal law review on December 17, 1987. The review resulted in the secession of Belka's eastern territories in 1988. This review also resulted in Project Pendragon being shut down since Belka was unable to continue funding the program. But this would not be the only time where Belka had to sell its territory. Belka had to sell off more of its land to its eastern neighbors and to Osea on August 29, 1991. Okay, I have a theory as to why Belka made the decision to give away more territory to their neighbors. I believe that it was caused by the construction of Excalibur. Here is why. After Belka allowed its eastern territories to secede in 1988, the leaders probably believed that they had just enough money to have the South Belka Munitions Factory to begin building Excalibur. So, construction of the weapon began on December 17, 1988, and everything was going as planned. No difficulties, everything's running pretty smoothly. Until the year 1991, the year when the team started to construct the main tower, was when they start to run into technological difficulties. So, the engineers need to spend more time trying to figure out how to overcome those problems. But all of that added time and additional materials used to overcome the problems is gonna cost Belka more money to get this project completed. In order to continue funding the project, Belka sold off more of its land in order to cover the extra costs. So, that's my theory as to why that happened. Anyways, let's get back to August 29th, 1991, the day of the sale. After Belka sold off the Great Lakes region to its western neighbor Osea, Osea came to Belka and said, hey, there's a whole bunch of natural resources in the Great Lakes region. If you help us out with extracting those resources, we're willing to share a huge sum of the profits with you. What do you say? Belka, which stood to profit from both the sale of the land and the resources extracted from the region, agreed to the proposition and formed the Five Great Lakes Resource Exploration Company with Osea. Belka believed that this partnership with Osea is how they were going to get out of this economic recession. But barely one month later, when the company was getting ready to search for the natural resources around the region, Belka would soon learn the truth. Osea had greatly exaggerated the amount of natural resources within the region. Osea's intentions were clear as day. They wanted to further destabilize Belka's precarious economic status. Although Osea's predatory actions were called out, the damage had already been done. The company became bankrupt. As a result, Belka continued to lose money. This unfortunate event fueled anti-Ocean sentiment among the Belkan populace, which allowed the Nationalistic Democratic Liberal Party, or DLP, to be elected as the new leading party of the Belkan government. The DLP was an extreme right-wing party comprised of nationalists and warmongers. Their goal was to stabilize the national economy and restore Belka's diminished political influence within the Ocean continent. Over the next four years, military spending reached new heights. The DLP continued to fund the development of V2. Excalibur was completed on August 9, 1993, and the South Belka Munitions Factory was creating another experimental weapon, the XBO. 
The XBO was an enormous aerial warship developed as a potential avenue for transporting multiple aircraft over long distances. One of the project's long-term goals called for the airframe's mass production, which would allow its use over multiple battlefields. As you all know by now, this project was going to cost Belka, you guessed it, a lot of money. But the DLP was not too worried about this situation, because they were already planning on retaking all of their lost territory. They believed that those regions may have large pockets of undiscovered natural resources, and if they can get their hands on them, they may be able to rescue their economy. They were not wrong, because sometime in early 1995, large deposits of valuable natural resources were discovered under the mountain range located in the belka ustio border. The discovery of resources in former Belkan territory was the final straw. As you all know, Belka invaded Osea and their former territories on March 25th, 1995, the beginning of the Belkan War. In summary, the discovery of the natural resources was not the main cause of the Belkan War. The true underlying causes of the war was years and years of increased military spending on expensive projects in a joint venture that made a nation's economic troubles go from bad to worse. If you like this video of Strange Real History, please intercept and destroy the like and subscribe button if you wish to see more Strange Real History videos. As always, my name is Saluda Seversol, and I'll see you next time. Soul out.